Advising Your IT Infrastructure with EdFi. Um, we're so glad that you took some time out of your day to join us for the webinar. And um, thank you for um, just being here and being present and, and being willing to learn, um, learn from our experts or subject matter experts who I have on the line with me today. Just a quick note about the format of the webinar. We are recording it. We will send a recording of this webinar to you and it will also be available on our website. So if any of your colleagues should have been here but couldn't be here today, we will have the recording available probably in a couple of days up on our website and then we'll also email it over to you. At any point during the presentation, um, please feel free to drop your questions into the Q&A uh, chat feature um, Q and A feature or the chat feature on the WebEx interface. Um, both myself, Maureen Wentworth, and Sai are and Lauren. Um, we're all here to answer your questions, and we'll be monitoring those um, the chats and the Q and A throughout the presentation. So, um, if you have anything that you a burning question you want to ask right at that moment, please put it in there, and we'll um, we'll stop the presentation and and uh, if it's relevant at that moment, and answer the question right away. Uh, we definitely want this to be interactive and we welcome all of your questions. Um, so with that, I'd love to introduce my two colleagues and, and get us started. I think Maureen Wentworth, I think you're you're going to kick it off for us next, right? That's correct. Thank you, Caroline. Can everyone hear me okay? All right, I'm gonna take silence and, and I didn't see any bad chats. Yes, okay, now there's a chat. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. As Caroline said, we're so excited to have um, such a great group on the line today to really dive in um, to some of our work, um, particularly around modernizing uh, IT infrastructure, which I know is on a lot of your minds right now, um, particularly as we are heading back into another school year, understanding that uh, data is more important now than it maybe ever was before um, as we look to address um, incomplete learning um, I don't, um, or, or you know, disconnected learning um, and really think about how to serve our students um, and excel out of this ongoing pandemic. Um, you know better than I do um, from your purchase in the state agencies that we have a lot of pain points and a lot of challenges to using data efficiently and effectively as state agencies. We often have, um, because of a lack of a student of a single data standard, we often have trouble accessing um, data for comparative results. We have trouble analyzing data. We often have duplicative requests that we're um, asking of our uh, districts in our in our local agencies. Um, we have a number of data silos happening within our own agencies and probably within the districts that we're interacting with as well. Um, we also then have challenges of using data um, in our local agencies consistently. Um, our, our less resourced districts often have um, less ability to utilize data. And as a state agency, we haven't done this because we don't want to use data, but we've um, developed systems over time. And, and that has created a paradigm where our systems are talking to each other. Um, and so as we think about how we modernize those systems, we want to think about um, how we implement a data standard to help us connect those disparate and siloed systems, bringing data in from the source systems, um, in a real time and in simple fashion or an easier fashion, I should say, more automated fashion um, so that we can really utilize data to make decisions. Um, we know that when we modernize our systems, we see some immediate benefits. Um, we can see the reduction of time taking, uh, time it's taking the local districts to report data to the state level, we can see an immediate reduction in cost savings um, that, that a data standard can provide um, when it comes to submission, when it comes to data use. And then we also know that as our transactions ramp up across our states, as we need to use data more, uh, we can also handle that 
influx of information in a way that still makes data incredibly usable um, at the state and local level for decision making. But where do we get started? We often hear that question um, from, from states, from districts, um, from, from our vendor community. How, you know, we know we want to move in this direction, but how do we really get started? Um, and and but woe is me, the ocean is so large and my boat is so small. How do I really dive into this work, um, have some quick wins so that I can demonstrate to leadership that this is the direction we should be going and this is the investment we should be making. And so we've been wrestling with that at the EdPi Alliance for some time and have come up with a strategy um, around um, developing and, and providing to the community a series of starter kits. What is that? Um, a starter kit. What we're trying to do is create some simple steps and lay those out um, for, for you to utilize um, that will help get you um, kind of off the ground and running toward um, an interoperable connected data solution using data standards. And so I'm going to um, turn this over to my um, incredible colleague, Saeed Srinivasan, who's going to walk us through um, the State Education Agency Modernization, um, IT Modernization Starter Kit, um, and what that looks like um, and how you can start to get your hands around uh, an implementation of data standards. Saeed, how are you? Doing good, Maureen. Thank you so much. Um, would you please move to the next slide? Of course. Um, yes. Um, so SEA modernization starter kit, right? We are um, addressing two use cases as part of this starter kit. The first one is the membership count, um, which you all know that this is for counting all of the students as of October 1st who are enrolled in a public school district with an FTE percentage of more than 50 percent. And uh, the second use case is the number of special education students who are uh, receiving special education services in a public school district. And these students are of the ages from five through 21. So these two use cases are covered as part of this uh, modernist product kit. Maureen, would you mind going to the next one? Um, so there are two parts to this um, modernization starter kit. The first one is the quick start guide, and then the second one is the setup guide. Um, what this quick start guide does, that it provides you a, a fully functional virtual environment, and that you can take it and explore. And you could also, we have seen across various agencies, there's, there's a lot of time being invested in terms of standing up an EDFI ODS API environment for you to either present it to your stakeholders or for you to explore that uh, uh, technology or um, talking to your leadership team, right? So we want to enable um, or shorten that uh, ramp up time for you to install this ODS API environment. So out of the box, we are providing you an environment that is completely functional so you can explore what is involved and how the components are linked together and how you can do the reads and writes with it. Um, so with that said, I'm going to take you to the event itself, that way that you all can see what is in there as part of the quick start guide and as part of the setup guide also. Um, Saeed, so while you're doing that, can I ask you a question from, um, is this mostly intended for a technical audience or is it for both technical and a non-technical audience? So could a non-technical person come to this starter kit and understand what you're talking about? Great question and great question. So that's why we developed this into two parts, right? The quick start part, the quick start guide and the setup guide. The quick start guide is for both non-technical and technical folks. Whereas the setup guide is for the technical folks only. So the quick start one is out of the box, take a look, explore. So that one, the leadership can see it, the business team can see it, and the stakeholders can see it as well. Answer the question, Caroline. Okay. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> So you will be able to access the SEA Modernization Starter Kit right from, if you search the SEA Modernization Starter Kit in our tech docs, it'll take you to this home page. And um, this is uh, this is where you can access the Quick Start Guide. Maureen, Wait, can you one, see my screen? One other question, Saeed, how do you get into tech docs? What is tech docs? Okay, tech docs <laughs> is our technical documentation site. And uh, this is for all of our technology, whether you're wanting to learn about the data standard or the API or the uh, tools that go along with the API, that this is a home page for all of the technical documentation relating to our um, FI uh, tools and suite of technology. Um, so the way that you get access to it is by getting a community account. Um, you can request the community account from our public website at phi.org. Um, Caroline or I will be paste that um, on the chat window as soon as I'm done with this presentation. And it's completely free. You go access it, uh, you go submit uh, basic information and uh, the Salesforce team will take care of providing you all the access rights to the technical documentation page. So what I'm showing you is the tech docs now. So this is the homepage for the modernization starter kit, and I'm gonna go into the quick start guide. And as I said earlier, you are getting an environment out of the box, right? It has the um, API, it has the admin app, it has the Swagger UI. All three of the softwares are installed um, as part of that virtual machine. So what do you need to have? You need to have an AWS account for this. What did we provide? We provided an AMI image, Amazon machine image, and you will be launching an EC2 instance off of that AMI image. As soon as, as, soon as you launch that virtual machine, you will have all of the software inside it. And this machine that you're seeing is one that I created. So I'm gonna go to the desktop of that machine, and here is the start page. As soon as you click, it's gonna take you to this start page. This is the home page for the quick start. And um, under the reports folder, you have reports. If you are uh, a person who's wanting to look at the reports first before getting into the solution, that is fine. It exists. We have generated five reports for those two use cases that I uh, mentioned earlier for the membership and for the special education student count. This is by race, gender, and grade and uh, for the special education it is by primary responsibility by age and by special education setting those are the five reports and these are the urls for you to access the api the swagger and the admin app i have already launched all of them so when you run the api you're going to see like this when you're running the um, swagger seeing all of the resources and when you run your admin app, um, you'll be seeing the admin app homepage. I'm gonna go back and um, show you uh, the detailed documentation that we have provided for you to explore this quick start, starter kit. So what that means is this is the database overview and um, this is going to show you what are the databases involved in the um, EDFI API technology. So I'm going to go and take a um, show you the actual documentation for the database overview. So this is talking about the three databases, the admin database, the security database, and the ODS database. The admin database is where you're going to be creating your keys and secrets for your vendor applications. The security database is uh, the one that you will be using to give permissions for your vendor applications to access the individual resources or the API endpoints. And the ODS database is going to be your transactional student information uh, database. Um, so, the, and this also provides you uh, the entity relationship diagram and explaining you what uh, the tables that are involved in each and every one of those databases and the purpose of those tables. 
um, please take a look and reach out to me if you have any questions. We have provided a set of sequels as well for you to run them against these three just to see how the um, sample data and how you can interact with the ODS data. So that's the database overview. Introduction to the API. This gives you an, uh, the initial concept of how a client server model works. What is the REST API? And um, how is the uh, request from a client reaches the server? And how is the response from the server reaches the client API client? And, um, and it's, um, it walks you through um, the resources that are part of the Swagger UI. We also have provided a set of Postman collection. What this means is this is where um, the reads and writes with the API come into play, right? So we have given you an environment now that, now that you want to use um, or interact with the API so that you can read the data or write to the database, right? This set, uh, set of Postman collections have um, get calls, post calls, and put calls as part of it. We decided that we don't want to burden you for you to create those JSON objects. So those JSON objects are part of this Postman collection. So when we will walk you through the yeah, steps involved in running those Postman collections as well. Um, so this way you're going to be creating um, set of students, uh, those students enrollment records and the students program association records and so on and see how they land in the database. And of course, you can do uh, updates on them and deletes on them as well. Um, so that's to do with the um, introduction to the API. And on the extensibility side, um, of course, when it comes to state education's data, um, often states are going to have extensions, right? Their unique needs based on the policy mandates. So. This guide provides you how you would go about extending the FI data model. And what we have provided as part of this quick start guide as extensions, we have uh, simple extensions as part of the enrollment record, which is that uh, resident LEA, resident school and reporting school. Those are the three extensions that we have created. So everything is out of the box. This is just for exploration purpose or for demonstration purpose. Um, so it, this will walk you through those uh, steps of how you can see the extensions through your Swagger UI um, under the SK namespace. We have also taken uh, the next step where you can run few validations against the data that is there in the database, right? So this is again, we have provided them as part of a, a set of store procedures and as well as, as a, a set of Postman collection. Um, so when you run the store procedure, you are going to be seeing the error messages in the data. Intentionally, we have created few errors in the data. In this case, it's relating to the race. And uh, we are asking you to run the uh, Postman collection to rectify the data. And after you rectify the data, we're going to ask you to same, ask you to run the same store, store procedure to see that the data is being rectified. So we added some simple data validations that you could do against the data. And of course, finally, viewing those five reports that I mentioned earlier, the membership and the special education student count reports. Um, Caroline, any questions so far on the quick start guide before I move uh, to the setup guide? I know you said this was for non-technical audiences, but this seems pretty technical. Um, what would you suggest? Like, I know you're about to go to the, maybe the view reports or to show some reports. I'm I'm thinking that other stakeholders that are non-technical people might not be able to follow that. Is is there something else that you would recommend them to go to or to, to um, see? Like, Right, right. So the, this is where we provided these reports, right? The membership count, what can um, what can um, the starter kit do relating to these two use cases, right? And of course, everything is packaged up. Um, a, a technical staff member can install it. 
and that technical staff member can demonstrate this to the leadership team. But what the leadership could benefit out of this is um, the state agencies generate these reports as part of their uh, fall collection, right? So they can take a look at what is in here, right? We, as part of the sample data set, we have three districts data, and this is providing you the membership data per grade, per um, gender, and per uh, race, ethnicity. So the reports, um, I know where you're coming from, Caroline, are the question. Um, the reports would benefit them to see what can be done or with the data that is there as part of the ODS. Carolyn, I would add to that. I think when when say is showing the reports, uh, they would be helpful for program program staff and, and analysts within the agency. When we're talking about senior letter, level leadership, uh, <laughs> these are probably not something that you want to put in front of your chiefs and deputies. Uh, the the information that chiefs and deputies are going to be more interested in is is the types of information that are on the edfi.org homepage with the examples of cost savings, time savings, um, and in interactions per, you know, hits on the API and how much of a how much of a load of information can um, can be handled at the state level. Thank you, Maureen. Okay, so the next one is on the setup guide. So the setup guide is um, is um, 180 degrees from uh, the quick start guide. Sorry about that. Um, so the quick start guide, it's out of the box. It's packaged it up, right? In the setup guide, we are um, allowing you to create your own environment with the set of instructions that we have provided. And of course, this is completely meant for technical folks. And uh, the set of instructions will, uh, there are seven steps involved in it, and these are based off of the um, state's operational cycle, right? When it comes to um, standing up the EDFI implementation, um, of course, the first process is the mapping process, right? You have to identify the gaps in the EDFI model um, that you have already been collecting in your legacy system or in your current data system. So identifying the data gaps is the primary step. And what that's going to enable uh, is that you are going to be, um, you are going to be um, um, uh, specifications for your vendors that you would provide to your vendors uh, before the beginning of the school year, six months or eight months prior to the beginning of the school year. So. Developing data specifications is the first step, and as part of developing those data specifications and the mapping process, you're going to be identifying your extensions, right? The model gaps, and um, and as part of the um, extensions, we are providing you a set of guidelines where in which that what is what should you consider before even sending the data model, right? The do's and don'ts of extending the FI data model. Um, should you go about um, asking the aggregate values? And of course not, because by collecting the granular information, states can derive that um, aggregate values off of those off of those unit level records, right? So, um, this the, these guidelines provide an opportunity for states to think through before designing their extensions, and then of course there is that uh, uh, the big question. Should states go about asking business logic from the vendors? Um, and of course not, right? Um, because this is going to add additional burden on your vendors to develop those additional business logic at, at the front end side versus um, the having that ability to derive those business logic in the downstream system. So this walks you through, through the guidelines of um, the operational cycles involved in the uh, states at FI implementation and we as part of it we're providing you um, hardware configurations and, and the recommendations and um, cloud migration and um, how do you go about setting the API security in terms of giving the keys and secrets to your vendor applications and allowing them to access certain resources and not allowing them to 
access certain resources. Um, so those are all part of this setup guide. So as as the name implies, this is a guide. Um, so this in the at the uh, after you finish going through this document, what this gives you is pilot environment, and that's this is your own environment where you're going to have your unique extensions and your specifications that you would provide it to your vendors and you're going to develop your validations as well as part of this and um special thanks to all the at five states um we have provided um in several places the links over to states certification documents and states data specification documents as well so this guide walks you through all of that Any um, any questions? And this also covers the initial foundational data. Um, how do you go about um, loading the foundational data? And uh, we are providing you a tool, and uh, you use that tool to load that foundational da data, which is your education organizations, the descriptors, and the courses, the programs. That information can be loaded. Any questions? Doesn't look like there's any questions from the Q and A or the chat right now. Mm -hmm. Unless you're brilliant in explaining this, so it's super clear to everyone. <laughs> um, so once again, uh, the difference is the first one is the out of the box environment. The second one is you are creating your own environment so that you can consume your student information system data. So this is a pilot ready environment. In the setup guide, it's a pilot ready environment. So with that said, um, Maureen, I'm going to pass it back over to you. Yep. Yep, if you can just slide up the presenter. I'll hang in there, I'm going to stop. And you should have it now. Slides back up. Yep. Great. And so this is what Saeed just went through on the um, starter kit uh, setup guide. Um, and what we're really hoping that these tools provide um, for state agencies is the opportunity to um, kind of kick the tires uh, with the with the. Um, with the first section and then really start thinking about how to to pilot and move um, an implementation forward um, with the setup guide. Uh, one thing that we would like to share and, and say, yeah, I'll, I'll lean on you to, to walk through this, but one thing we often get asked um, is, you know, what does this look like when when we're all up and running when we've done our pilot, we've moved to production, we're ready to deploy statewide. What should this um, architecture, this modern architecture really look like. And we've done some work to kind of um, scan the um, existing EdFi implementation states um, and, and pull out all of their best practices into this, um, this architecture guide that again, Caroline is probably more for a technical audience or a slightly technical audience, not something you necessarily want to walk in with um, to the chief's uh, office unless they're really um, into that, which would be great. I would love more chiefs to get nerded out about architecture diagrams. Um, but uh, but hopefully this is a little bit of a helpful um, view as to you know what does it look like when when EdFi is operationalized in the state. And so, do you want to walk through a little bit of of the diagram? And I'm happy to to use the pointer as you as you walk through it. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Maureen. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Perfect. Um, so the the top side uh, of the rectangle is the LEA side of responsibilities, and the bottom rectangle um, is the SCA side of responsibilities. Um, on the top, um, you see that green color box, the database 
structure that is your student information system and i mentioned that you as a state is going to be providing the specification document um, either eight months prior to your school year beginning um, generally i have seen states um, providing the specification document to their vendors by um, by january february and march timeline right or sometimes even the december of the previous year so as soon as the specification document is provided, the SIS systems are going to be um, starting to develop their, their side of the programming, right? They have to enable that uh, API client or the FI connector. Um, so they will, they will start working on that. Once they are ready, the integration testing is going to be happening. And at that point, um, you are going to be standing up your sandbox environment or that pilot ready environment that I was talking about, right? So that environment is going to have the gear icon, which is that FI API in the bottom rectangle, and the orange color database structure, so which is your operational data store, so the FI operational data store. So the the FI logo in there, in the arrow between the green box and the orange box, the HTTP, this is where your REST API calls are going to be going back and forth between the student information system and um, your FI ODS. Um, via the API. So it is nothing else but um, CRUD operations, create, read, and update and delete operations against the data that is there in the operational data store. Um, as I was saying, the FI ODS is a transactional database. We have seen across the state education agencies, it is an year based implement. So you're going to see an FI ODS for every year 2020, 2021, and 2022. And also by law, some agencies have to stand up three or four years of their API for their vendor systems um, and for some um, correction, correcting the previous year's data. So with that said, you consume the transactional data in your real time in the FI ODS. And after that, so you're going to be providing, the state is going to be providing the submission report back to the um, district folks. So the district can then see what they have submitted and what they did not submit. So it's going to show them um, what data got landed in the FI ODS. And then we have seen in Wisconsin across all states, we have seen um, that the data in the transactional database is um, ETL over to uh, the multi-year ODS database. So this is where you're going to have my, um, collection year database. 20, all of the years are combined together so that you can run your business validations in here. Um, one point that I missed is that when the data gets landed in the FI ODS, there is a tier one validation that's happening. What that tier one validation means is the schema validations, right? Uh, referential integrity checks are being done. So we call them as tier zero and tier one validations. Those are all going to be captured by the API and thrown back to the student information systems to the, to the district users. So they can be in one place to see those error messages. And when the data gets landed in the multi-year ODS, this is where your business two validation, level two validations are going to be running with that validation engine. We have seen, um, proprietary softwares being used or in-house developed validations being used for those. And um, in the downstream, um, we are showing you a state SLDS that we have seen um, in um, uh, state implementations. And that's your data warehouse, right? It's the dimension modeling. This is not the FI schema. It's based on uh, dimension and fact tables for you to generate your edfax files your growth model files or any other data requests that you need to service and uh, or or your dashboards for your um, district users and there's also another part that i missed which is that integrity report once you run the business two validations um, states are showing back to the districts what are the level two validations um, that are captured and um, on the data be, being as error messages so it, with the EDFI implementation, yes, the interaction between the districts and the state is still kept in place and intact. Um, 
Maureen, I think, I think I've covered so yeah. much everything in this. I absolutely think you did, Zai. And I think the other thing that's really exciting uh, that we've seen in terms of best practice and um, you know what what states have what our existing states have done is that with a modern architecture, it's not just the technical that gets kind of a, a refresh and a modernization. It's the it's the positive interaction between the state and the district. Um, I always like to think about uh, that, you know, early in my time at, at Advice, I and I went up to the, the district data conference in the state of Wisconsin, where you know, all the, the Wisconsin districts were, were together in one place. And um, it was an annual conference. In the first session of the conference, Kurt Kiefer and his team stood on stage and had a slide deck that said, last year, we heard this from you. And this is what we've done to fix that, or this is what we plan to do, and this is the timeline on which we plan to do it. Um, and it was just a really great um, example of when your agency and your districts are working together, are utilizing a data standard, are understanding uh, it, each other's work in a new way, um, you get to have this more supportive um, you know, education agency as a service provider to districts conversation that's really authentic and very much welcomed by the districts. Um, so it was a really, really powerful example to me. Um, and you see some of that on the state architecture diagram, you know, the call outs in blue um, that really indicate that back and forth between the agency um, and the district. One other point, Maureen, um, to add to this, that this architecture, um, we call it as a successful state architecture, no matter whether it's being hosted on the cloud or on on-prem environment. Right. So um, I would like people to notice that, that this works both both ways. Absolutely. Say, um, yes. we have a question um, from the chat. Uh, I saw that IIS is being used is there set up documentation for the roles required? I think that was that question came in when you were still back onto the quick start and in the um, starter kit. Yes, yes, the installation instructions will walk through that. Um, there's one thing that I would like to mention. This is an application to application uh, call, meaning that student information system is the client application that is calling the API application. So, which means that we are giving credentials or permissions to the API application using um, our admin app. So, the admin app is a is a way to issue that. Yes, on the SQL Server side, yes, you can set up roles, and that is also being documented in the installation instructions as part of the setup guide. Okay. That was that was a question. Thanks, Brian, for your patience and letting us answer that for you. I think that was the only questions that we've seen come in through the chat or through the Q and A. Well, please feel free to add more questions in either the chat or the Q and A. Um, and as we start to wrap this up today, I will just point out that we are going to dive into this another layer deeper. Um, in September. So mark your calendars, send your technical folks. Um, this is going to get weedy, um, but we'll do a, a full technical walkthrough of uh, the starter kit on Thursday, September 16th, um, same time, 245 Eastern, 145 um, Central. And, and this will start to um, really integrate what we've talked about today in overview. Um, and really dive in one layer deeper or two layers deeper on the technical side. So um, definitely uh, the audience for this would be your, your technical teams. Um, so you, anything else you wanna say about the, the next webinar? Um, nothing much, Maureen. Yes, it's, um, it's going to be a technical one where in which I am going to be showing them how to do the binary installation of the technical suite. That's part of, that's part of the setup guide. Great. And for those of you who are interested in, in more, um, in, in more EdBuy, um, we are hosting our summit again this year. I'm really excited to be back for both in-person and virtual options on November 15th to the 18th. Uh, we'll be here in, in Austin with, um, you know, 
some safety protocols, health and safety protocols in place will also be virtual at the same time, November 15th through 18th um, to accommodate anyone who is able and excited about travel and anyone who is um, who is still uh, opting to, to stay local. Um, so this is a, our summit is a great opportunity to both dig into our technical work, but also share best practice on um, on other fronts as well. So um, feel free to uh, bring teams, uh, you know, share the wealth, not just technical folks can get um, some really good information out of the Edfi summit. Caroline, anything else um, you want to say about the summit? Um, I will say one thing. Um, well, two things. One, Registration should be up by mid August. So look Great. for that. We'll have the full agenda closer to September 1st. So you can see like which um, sessions are going to be great for the technical audience, which are more for, you know, more of a leadership role or, or the non technical folks like me. Um, so, so look for all of that. The virtual options are going to be a curated component of the summit. So if you are in person, you're going to get many more options of choices and sessions that you can attend. Obviously, the, the virtual experience is going to be kind of a truncated or a shortened version of what the in-person experience will be. So just keep that in mind as you're thinking about making plans. The other thing I just wanted to point out, because Brian um, asked on the chat, the recording for this webinar will be available in a couple of days. We will actually WebEx has gotten way better with they're pushing it out much quicker. So as soon as we get it, we will email it to all registered attendees. We'll also post it on our website. And from that email, you can easily forward that email on to some of your colleagues that might not have been here today. Um, and of course, you can always reach out to Maureen and Saeed and myself. Our email addresses and our contact information is on edfi.org under meet the team. So you can learn about our background and and right there, perfect segue. <laughs> and, and Caroline, when we send out um, the recording, we can also attach this slide deck, uh, and and so folks can have the the links that we're within, um, and make sure that they have our um, email addresses and phone numbers at, at hand if they have any other questions or. Um, or want to dive in more. We're really, you know, as an organization, our, our, our goal and our mission is to connect data, make sure that it's um, accurate, secure, and usable uh, to really improve student learning. And, and that's what we're all about. And so, um, so we're here to help that. We're here to um, help you think strategically about a interoperability plan across your state. Um, we're here to to think tactically about what um, what a pilot project looks like, uh, and we're we're here to to help you um, utilize Edvi from a technical standpoint as well. Um, and so, never hesitate to reach out. Um, we we love to help, uh, and and that's what we're here to do. Do we have any other questions that came in from the chat as we as we wrap up? I didn't see any others. Um... But yeah, we'll send that link around in the, the email with all the information. So thank you everyone for attending. Have a great rest of your day. This concludes the so webinar. Much. Thank you all.